Hey everyone, today I will show you how to use proportions to adjust the ingredient quantities in a recipe for a different serving size than the original. Be sure to read the objectives and the directions completely. First, I will go ahead and show you that I will be using the recipe of these beautiful burger buttons. I have actually been using this recipe for the, about the past six months when making freshly made burgers here at home. I'm going to go ahead and write the name of the recipe in this first box. I'll then go ahead and link the website here by selecting the name, clicking insert link, pasting the link, and clicking apply. I will then type the original recipe servings, which was eight, followed by the new amount of servings I'm changing the recipe to, which is 12. I then take a screenshot of my recipe ingredients over on the website, click on the insert image option, insert image, and I would then upload the image from my computer where my image was saved. So here's the screenshot of my ingredients. I then follow the same process to insert a picture of the meal. Here is a picture of the burger buns that I took from the recipe. I will now go ahead and type the original recipe ingredients in the first column. I will then write the ratio for one serving, given that my original recipe is made for eight. So I will continue to use the denominator of eight throughout this column. The proportion used to increase the recipe to serve your entire party, which in my case is 12, tells me that I will continue to use the number 12 in the second denominator, which is in the second ratio of my proportion. My first ingredient is one cup of lukewarm water. This means I'm using one cup for eight original servings. I'm going to copy paste this proportion here into this first box and I would just adjust my 15 to 12 because I am taking a recipe that is originally one cup for eight servings to X cups for 12 servings. I can solve this proportion by cross multiplying eight times X to get eight X, one times 12 to get 12, meaning I write 8x equals 12. I now solve this one step equation by dividing both sides by eight. That is x equals 1.5 because 12 divided by eight is 1.5. This means I need one and a half cups of lukewarm water for my recipe of 12 servings. Notice that I converted this 1.5 to 1.5 because typically measuring cups or measuring utensils are in fractions. My second ingredient is two tablespoons of butter. This means my ratio is two to eight. That means two tablespoons of butter for eight servings. So when I write my proportion, that is two tablespoons of butter for eight servings, is equal to X tablespoons of butter for 12 servings. Let's follow the same process of cross multiplying eight times X, eight X, two times 12, 24. Divide both sides by eight. So 24 divided by eight is equal to three. Therefore, I need three tablespoons of butter for my adjusted recipe. My next ingredient is one large egg. That means the ratio is again one to eight. So my proportion will be the same as in this first ingredient and so will the work. Eight X equals 12 because eight times X is eight X and one times 12 is 12. Divide both sides by eight. Again, I get X equals 1.5. Now notice this time I'm typing that my adjusted ingredient amount will be two large eggs. I wouldn't type 1.5 large eggs because it would be a challenge to get 
half of an egg in my recipe. This means I decided personally to round up rather than down to two large eggs because when I've actually tried adjusting this recipe, if I use only one egg versus the two eggs, I end up with a texture that I don't like as much as using the two large eggs. So my reasoning is I prefer the texture with the two large eggs, which is my rounded amount by rounding up. My next ingredient is three and a half cups of all-purpose flour. So when I type this, I go ahead and type three space one forward slash two. Once I hit the space bar, it automatically changes the one half to a fraction. I then use another forward slash and the eight to show that I'm using this ratio three and a half to eight. I know you're technically not supposed to write a fraction or in this case a mixed number inside of another fraction, but in this case, I'm going ahead and letting you know that it's okay to do this for the purpose of our problem because it makes it easier to write. So in this case, if I copy paste the previous proportion into this row, I will just change this one to a 3.5. Again, I'm taking my fraction value, writing it as a decimal. When calculating, it is easier to type this value as a decimal. We'll change it back to a fraction for the final ingredient amount. So 8 times x, 8x. 3.5 times 12, that's 42. So we have 8x equals 42, divide both sides by 8, that's x equals 5.25. Again, if we convert this to a fraction, this will be 5 and 1 quarter cups of all-purpose flour. My next ingredient is 1 fourth cup of sugar. So 1 fourth to 8, that means 1 quarter cup of sugar for 8 servings. When I write this as a proportion, I use the decimal value. 0 0.25 cups of sugar to 8 servings is equal to x cups of sugar to 12 servings. So let's go ahead and calculate 8 times x, 8x, equals 0 0.25 times 12, that is 3. Divide both sides by 8, that gives me the decimal 0 0.375, which as a fraction would have been 3 out of 8, 3 eighths. However, at least for me, my measuring tools, utensils, do not come in eighths. They come either in thirds, fourths, or halves. So in this case, I'm going to round to one-third cups of sugar because 0 0.375 it's pretty close to 0 0.333, in other words, 0 0.3 repeating. So that's my justification for rounding to one-third cups of sugar. By the way, notice I'm using this marking at the end of each of these rounded amounts because I'm going to go ahead and explain these in my explanation. I want to make sure I justify my reasoning for the values I'm rounding to as I'm explaining as I go through the process. My next ingredient is one and a quarter teaspoons of salt. So same process, one and a quarter to eight. Go ahead and write this in the form of a proportion. Follow the same steps to cross multiply. In this case, I get eight X equals 15. Divide both sides by eight. That is X equals 1.875. And again, when I try to convert this to one of the fractions of my measurements, either halves, quarters, thirds, I'm going to go ahead and in this case round to one and three quarter teaspoons of salt. And again, I will justify this in my explanation below. My last ingredient is one tablespoon of instant yeast. Notice here, I'm using one again, which is the same value I used in this row and in this row. So the work happens to be the same all across from here to here. So I can simply copy paste this into these rows here. One to eight, same proportion as before. One to eight equals x to 12. We get eight x equals 12, divided both sides by eight to again get x equals 1.5. Go ahead and write this adjusted ingredient as one and one and a half tablespoons of instant yeast. 
I now have this extra row which I can delete. Use the right click, select delete row. Do the same for this example row that I included in your original document. Go ahead and delete this row as well. It's no longer needed. Now you have only your ingredients for your recipe. You're ready to type the directions on how to make the recipe. In my case, I'm taking the instructions from my recipe. I'm copying them, heading on back, and pasting them here. Now I can go ahead and number them off. The first one is step one, followed by step two, step three. Now in step three, when I read through this, I realize that it says divide into eight pieces. However, in my adjusted recipe, this is for 12. So I need to change that to a 12. Be sure to look through the instructions and if you need to adjust anything based on your new adjusted recipe, make those changes. I then have step four, step five, and step six. My direction section is complete. I'm ready for my explanation section. I need to use complete sentences to describe the strategies or mathematical calculations that I used in the section above. I can also use this space to describe my justifications for rounding wherever I did need to round. So again, first I explain all of my calculations and strategies. I explain, in my case, why I rounded to two eggs. I would then explain why I rounded to one third cups of sugar. And I would lastly explain why I rounded to one and three fourth cups of salt. Be sure to reach out with any questions you have along the way. Good luck, have fun adjusting your recipe for a different amount than the original serving size. And hopefully some of you get around to actually cooking or baking the recipes that you decided to choose for this activity.